Welcome back to our special edition of Big Picture, celebrating Hispanic Heritage Month. It is so fitting to gather here today on a month that we celebrate who we are as a community and as a nation. The theme is beyond its words. The theme for this month is Esperanza, a celebration of hope and heritage. It is the very cornerstone of what today is all about. If we could turn back the pages of time, four years ago today, we were waking up to one of the worst disasters that has ever hit our island of Puerto Rico. Hurricane Maria touched us all. Back then, our community didn't hesitate to stand up to join forces across our great state of New York to respond. Many from across the state are the same faces we see here today. It was the right thing to do with the help of government, business, and community through the generous contributions, Buffalo, New York was able to raise close to a quarter million dollars and over 500 pallets of food and paper products to aid our brothers and sisters and families on the island of Puerto Rico. Unlike then, today we are here again to join forces for a different cause, a cause that is special to the heart of this Hispanic community here in our great city of Buffalo. And it is to build the first of its kind in upstate New York, Hispanic Heritage Cultural Institute. Again, again we can't do it alone. We can't do it alone. We need the help of business, corporations, community, and most important, the government, elected officials that are here today. And I'm grateful, I'm humble. Let me say, since we began this journey, it hasn't been easy. There has been many obstacles. We have been challenged with much doubt, a pandemic, and doors difficult to open, and doors that wouldn't open to raise the much needed $10 million. It is no easy tax, task. I've been told it's a heavy lift. We are in no position for a project that big. I've learned in this journey that we, when it comes to giving, no one wants to be first and no one wants to be last. But thank God we have been very fortunate. It's a project that we all can agree it's the right thing to do for this community. It has been built on our faith. And thanks to the folks along the way, we have been able to charter a path that each and every day we see that we are not alone. There are so many to thank. It's been said, if I have seen further, it is by standing on the shoulder of giants. It's by standing on the shoulders of those who came before us. We can see further and achieve more. If you look around at the very corridor that we celebrate this special occasion, you can see those giants that we owe a debt of gratitude on the lampposts. You see them on the murals, on the parapets, and in the narratives proudly displayed, it's our pioneers, our leaders that put their stake in the ground for a better future for their families and community. Today we are doing just that, putting that same stake in the ground for the generations to follow, for a better and more secure future for our children, our families, and our community. My dear legislators and friends, the Hispanic Heritage Council, under the leadership of our president, Esmeralda Sierra, and the many organizations represented here today, this is a, this is a, a very grateful community. Our hearts are overjoyed 
We are proud of what we have been able to do and as we come together for our community. This is a critical project. This is a critical project for our Hispanic community. It is a critical project for Niagara Street, Avenida San Juan in the city of Buffalo. It is a critical project for the city of Buffalo. And I could um, talk about what the city's commitment is going to be. The city's commitment is going to be significant. Uh, but I will not mention what that commitment is today because if I did, uh, Mr. Speaker, I would get in trouble with Assemblyman Rivera's favorite elected official, and that is the majority leader of the city council, David Rivera. So when the city announces our commitment and contribution to this great project, it will be with all of the members of our city council uh, present. Uh, as uh, Mr. Rodriguez has indicated, the council has been so supportive of this project. And I'm glad that my administration has been supportive. And when we come together, while it might not be quite as big as what the assembly is going to announce today, it will be a huge commitment on the part of the city uh, to this project. When I first got elected speaker in 2015, and Sean Ryan, I, I did a tour of every single Democratic Assembly district outside of the city of New York, and Sean Ryan brought me here to his, to then Assemblyman Sean Ryan's district to introduce me to the wonderful Hispanic community uh, that is here in, in Buffalo. And remember, coming from the Bronx, uh, the Hispanic community and Hispanic uh, heritage is very important. I actually represent the only district in the Bronx that does not have a plurality or the number one population in those assembly districts is of Hispanic descent. So I know I got to do something to make sure that I'm still accepted throughout the rest of the, the borough. And so this is really something that's, that's very, very important. Understanding your heritage particularly for our young people, to understand where you came from. It also helps to chart of where you are going to go. And I know that COVID has been a little bit of a distraction and a setback to all of us, but I understand the goal. And when this was brought to me, and I, and I did promise during that meeting when Sean brought me here, that you could always count me and the assembly in as partners and to whatever culturally is done to bring out, like I said, to be a model for our children to understand. You know, being born here in this, in this country is a great thing, but you should never lose the identity from where your foreparents came from, whether, whatever island that may be, whatever country that may be. So I couldn't be happier to be here today to announce this, uh, this wonderful grant, but I'm gonna put a little asterisk next to that because um, John is going to come back and give a little more good news. But it's my pleasure to be here in Western New York, in uh, the second city, uh, uh, the Queen City. Uh, and I, when I say second, I'm only talking about in population. Uh, but I do have a very uh, big love for the city of Buffalo. But this is an amazing uh, project that we're going to be a, a part of. And we will continue to be partners uh, for the Hispanic uh, Heritage building and because even building a building there's still ongoing needs that you have so you will be able to continue to have the uh, assembly as a, as a partner but what a great day uh, for the Hispanic community in a great month where we acknowledge the uh, heritage month so I'm just happy to be in Buffalo congratulations to all of the hard-working people who put in so much time and energy and love and when people say you give a, a hard time that's what you're supposed to do you're supposed to hold us accountable and make sure that we do what's right. So I'm happy to be here and congratulations to everyone. So we're here to present uh, in the most exciting way possible <laughs> in a big fake check, uh, in a, a substantial investment into the Hispanic Heritage Cultural uh, Council. Uh, but there's a problem. We made a mistake. Thank goodness this is on dry erase board and not anything else. <laughs> Uh, but last night I called Kaz and I said, how much has the council raised to date outside of the money that we were anticipating uh, 
securing. And he gave me a figure, uh, and I said, well, if you add that to the amount of money that we're talking about, it gave me another figure. And, you know, when the speaker and I started talking, and with the le leadership of the, of the chairwoman and everybody else as part of uh, the state delegation, uh, we're excited to announce that this is the wrong number, actually. That it's not 2.5, it's actually 3.8. <laughs> so, the, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So, so there's a there's a significance to that number. <laughs> there's a significance to that number, and that is if you add that amount to the amount that's currently on hand, that means that this project is halfway funded. <laughs> How did the extra money come through? What what uh, what prompted you to be able to make such a large contribution on behalf of the state? Well, when I, I spoke to Assemblymember Vera, when uh, I just wanted to know just how much coffee. of the ten million dollars was funded, and when John said that it was one point two million, uh, and then we had two point five, I said, well, let's at least try to make sure that they're halfway there. So if you had the one point two plus the three point eight that we gave, that's how we get to five. So they're halfway there. Kez, are you okay? Did you have any idea there was going to be this extra punch? No idea. No idea. I, I just got a call late last night from Assemblyman John Rivera, and he asked me, Kez, I, I want to know exactly what's the figure that you have raised without the announcement for tomorrow. And I told him, I, I said, uh, Assemblyman, with your commitment tomorrow, we're going to be at $3.7 And he told me, thanks. That's all I want to know. And till, till today that uh, we're surprised of the announcement. I'm choked up seeing it. You must be so emotional, Kaz. You put this... Many identified your heart and soul into this project, and it isn't over. There's a long road to go, but this really propels it forward. Yeah, it does, John. And all I can say that the cornerstone of this project has been faith and hope. You know, $10 million may not seem a lot, but it's a heavy lift. But, you know, uh, what I was told as, as far as being a heavy lift, or it may be impossible, I never let that get in the way of our perseverance as an organization to be able to raise the capital that we need. So I'm very grateful. I'm grateful to the Western New York delegation of the New York State Assembly, our speaker, our majority leader in the assembly, our assemblyman John Rivera, the state senate, to the entire New York State legislative body, both the assembly and the Senate, and I'm sure the, the Senate will come through with something, and uh, we're, we're honored. Well, and Carl Palladino was here. I know you thanked him. Very generous to donate this property, and I know the city is next, so it's now up to the corporate community and the citizens of Western New York to support you as well. That, that's, cor that's correct, uh, John. The very corner that we're standing was, is owned by Ellicott Development and Mr. Carl Palladino. And he's the one also that early on when we started planning, we, we, we thought to ourselves and we talked to our architects and our construction management company that who owns those, uh, the lot. And that's when we went to visit uh, Mr. Palladino and he said, definitely, it's the right thing to do for the community. I want to be part of it and I want to donate those, those parcels. We're happy to support it too. And with Chris here, maybe we'll get another WBBZ connection as well. But Chris, you have a question. As a mentor, as an example for your community as a leader, how do you envision this? How excited are you that this is going to be here for generations for the young people who come along after you? Well, th this facility here is not about brick and mortar. This facility here is about changing lives, transforming lives, you know, we've had a team of folks, of educators, community leaders, and folks from the community that have been working on the programming for this institute. And it's going to be an institute that's going to be a holistic approach to 
making a big impact and effect not only on our children, the future leaders of our community, but the entire city of Buffalo. Thank you, Kez. If you would like to support our vibrant Hispanic community, go to this website, HispanicHeritageWNY.org. Thanks for watching The Big Picture. Follow us on Facebook and join the conversation on Twitter. And thanks for watching WBBZ-TV.